1523, Tyndale arrived in London, set upon his task. Thomas More was a lawyer, the Speaker of the House of Parliament, a rising figure in the King's service. But his real sympathies lay elsewhere, in the monastery of the Charter House. He passionately celebrated all the rituals of his church, with its prayers, its vigils, and its fastings. For four years before he entered the King's service, he spent his time here with the monks of Charter House. Beneath the robes of a courtier, he secretly wore a hair shirt in order to mortify his flesh. That's why he was implacably opposed to William Tyndale and the new men. So do you ask me why I serve my king? If there were no king, there would be no law. Obedience to our natural parents is most just. To the king, juster. To Holy Mother, the church and Christ her spouse is the highest duty of all. From the church issues the word of God. All judicial sentences are judgments of God. That is why I am bound by most solemn obligation to stop the mouths of heretics. Will all laws be laughed to scorn? Will authority be breached? Will all fall into riot and ruin? Thomas More's position was typical. The Bishop of London was no more sympathetic. There was no place in England for a man who wished to translate the Gospels. So Tyndale left the country. He was no secret agent, but as if by instinct, he disappeared completely. There is no official sighting of this man, this most wanted man, in 11 years, apart from a rumor picked up by a British ambassador moving through France that there was an Englishman who seemed to answer his description who was working on translating the Bible in words. And that information was at least six months too late. We can speculate that Tyndale sailed from London to Hamburg and traveled from there to Wittenberg, where Luther lived. And with the example of Luther's German translation of the Bible before him, Tyndale set to work. He had to acquire languages. He had to acquire Greek. He had to learn German because he had to understand what the work, the pioneering work that Luther had done. And eventually he had to understand uh, Hebrew as well. Tyndale can have spent no more than 10 months in Wittenberg. Yet by the end of that time, his first draft of the translation of the New Testament was complete. He was quite literally decoding the Bible. Before his work, an English Christian could have understood no more than tiny fragments of the book his own religion was based upon. Tyndale's work was not translation, it was revelation. O oh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Oh, it is wonderful to me that God's word should issue from my mouth. I am sure, and my conscience bears me record, that of a pure intent, singly and faithfully, I have interpreted it. As far forth as God gave me the gift of knowledge and understanding, I have, before all other duties, cherished the simple sense of the scripture. Master Moore says it is not lawful for the lay people to have it in their mother tongue. Wherefore? Is a ploughboy not worthy to receive the words of eternal life? But translation was less than half the task. Tyndale travelled to Cologne. There he found a printer willing to risk his life by working on this most dangerous project. Well, imagine you're, you're William Tyndale and you want to get the good news to England. You take your manuscript to a printer. Uh, first, a compositor takes all these types from the boxes, puts them into a stick, um, binds lines together. Then these have to be put into a matrix, the matrix into a wooden form. The printer pulls the lever 
four or five times a minute. If you carry on like this, it would take about two months to produce one print run, 3,000 copies of this book. But Tyndale's time was short. Their tongues the worse for drink, the printers had been somewhat indiscreet. The Catholic authorities knew what Tyndale was planning. Now, we, we are all used to these dramatic action scenes. The hero has to copy the files in the office of the villain. The hero has about two minutes, three minutes, but he can do it. He has his floppies ready, he presses the buttons, it's all done, and off he goes. Tyndale has to wait for two months before this is ready. That amount of time wasn't given to him in Cologne. The printing process was interrupted. The printer's workshop was raided, but neither Tyndale nor the pages he had completed were found. Tyndale had been alerted. He'd fled to Worms. His um, printer in Worms has to start all over again. And at last, the book is there. Only one of them survives. You have a neat, simple, straightforward text of Tyndale's Bible in a very simple, neat and clear language. The last part of the task was to deliver the Bibles where they could be read. So the smuggling will have to start, and this too needs time and preparation. If you want to smuggle this to England, you're not going to bind this into um, a leather cover and make it even more difficult. You're going to smuggle this in the shape of loose leaves, so small that you can cover them completely with the palm of your hand. You would hide these tiny leaves of Tyndale's first New Testament between the larger leaves of books that are not forbidden. The Testaments were smuggled in to the Pool of London, which is behind me. They were unbound sheets to begin with, but they bound up into a small volume which you could easily fit into your pocket, and they were hugely popular. Again, we know that because there were pirate editions coming in from Antwerp within three or four months. So the original had sold out for about two weeks' wages they were for a working man, and they were already pirating them within three months.